Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. Today we are going to be talking about Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Stay tuned, that is coming up on this month's Viewer's Choice Book Review. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This is the November Viewer's Choice book review uh, from my monthly Viewer's Choice poll. So we're gonna be talking about Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Make sure you hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my Discord and Bookstagram down below. That will be linked below, of course. So let's talk a little bit about Warbreaker. So Warbreaker is one of these books within the Greater Cosmere by Brandon Sanderson that is in effect, it is a standalone, just as Elantris is effectively. Now, as I understand, there may yet be more books within these worlds that will be written, but at the moment, like Elantris, Warbreaker is a standalone book within this greater Cosmere. So the basic plot or premise behind this story is there is a kingdom divided. There's the small kingdom of Idris and there's the larger kingdom of Halandrin. It used to be one one kingdom until it was split after an event called the Many War. This book takes place in a setting approximately 300 years after this Many War, and the King of Idris must send his daughter to Halandrin to marry the God King. Now, Idris is a very closed off religious community, effectively, and they have all these ideas about what Halandrin is, what their God Kings are and how horrible and evil and terrible these people are. But the king must honor his agreement and must honor his treaty in an effort to keep the peace and prevent war from coming to Idris. So it, what happens essentially is the king at the last moment decides that he is not sending his oldest daughter Vivenna, but rather he's going to send his youngest daughter Ciri to be the bride of the god king instead. Uh, and this, of course, triggers all the events that we have happen in this book. Ciri goes off to Halandrin to marry the God King, and Vivenna shortly follows thereafter in an effort to rescue her sister. But things do not turn out as she expected. And so none of that is a spoiler. Uh, that is the setup and the premise for this entire story and this book. So let's talk a little bit about what these God Kings are and what the return are. Essentially in the Holandran court, the God King is the one with the most magic, the most powerful. He is the supreme being. He is not just king, but he is a God as well. And the returned are effectively these minor gods in the court of the gods. And they have their priests that worship them in their own little congregations, essentially, in the iridescent tones, as the religion of this world is called. Each religion, each god, effectively, has their own particular purpose uh, as far as what they are responsible for. And the people of Halandrin will have petitioners petition their gods and their gods' priests for whatever blessings, perks, or benefits that they want to get from their gods. The gods are pampered, they're serviced by their priests all the time, but they can't ever seem to leave the court of the gods. They live there their entire lives, and the returned are people who have died in a past life doing some kind of heroic deed, and they are blessed with the gift of being returned to the world so that they might accomplish something heroic and fulfill their final purposes. The God King, of course, is one of these returned, uh, which is part of the whole religious setup that we have for Halandrin. Now, the magic system within this world is, is interesting. It's based on this concept of breath, breath being the soul. And the more breaths you hold, or the more souls you hold, in a sense, the more powerful you are. And as you go up the chain, as you gain more breaths for yourself, you become more powerful and you can you would rise effectively to the level of gods or even god king themselves. So this is the basic concept behind that. These breaths can be breathed into inanimate objects or things that were once alive to reanimate them or animate them and become living again. And that enables you to have the power to command these objects to do things. You could breathe breath into a piece of rope, for example, and order and command it to hold things. Or you could breathe breath into someone who has died and they become uh, these undead living soldiers at your command if that is what you choose to call them or choose to do with them. These undead soldiers or previously living people that have had breath breathed into them to reanimate them are called the lifeless and to the Idrians they are an abomination and evil and just wrong to do that. 
And so there's different things that you could do with this breath in terms of how it affects everything and what you're, you're doing and how that magic operates. And this breath is intricately tied into the color spectrum and it references how colors will drain from an object when breath is taken from it or from a person when breath is released from them into an object. So colors seem to play a very important role in this. That being said though, I found with this magic system that the it was kind of flawed in a sense because the color aspect of this magic system where the colors are so intricately involved in the description, we could have taken the whole color aspect out of this magic system and I don't feel like it would have had any impact whatsoever in the functioning of the magic system. It seemed like such a useless, pointless, unnecessary add-on. Now you know on this channel if you watch it that I love Brandon Sanderson and yes, I am actually being a bit critical of Sanderson with this book. Admittedly, that doesn't happen very often, but with this particular book and this particular magic system, it just didn't make sense to me that the color aspect would play such an important role in the way it was written, and yet it felt like you could take that out and there'd be no inherent change in how the magic system of the breaths actually functioned. So that is a big drawback of this one for me in terms of how that works and it kind of diminishes the magic system in a way I felt because it's something so useless. Now this is one of Sanderson's earlier works admittedly so I definitely think when he wrote this he was still developing as a writer still developing and figuring out how magic systems work but that is definitely a drawback for me with this particular book is in how that worked. But uh, aside from that I did enjoy the characters and how they function. I enjoyed uh, their story arcs overall and I think it was really interesting how the character interplay worked together especially with Favena and Tonks and, Tonks and Denth and Vasher and how they work how their character dynamics work together and I'm not really going to say much more than that other than some of them are not who they seem to be. Favena being an injured princess is Find, soon discovers that she is largely naive to the world and doesn't really have the understanding she thinks she does and that simply her education did not prepare her for the reality of the world of Haladrin that she found herself living within. And one of the aspects that I did enjoy about this is uh, we take Light Song, one of the gods of the Court of the Gods. He spends his entire time at the court of the gods questioning and denying his own divinity. And I thought that that was a really interesting aspect and kind of funny in a way that you have a god who has a religious following and priest denying his own divinity. So effectively this god is basically declaring himself to be an atheist not believing in gods. And that is just funny to me. I find that ironic, I find that hilarious, I, I just love how that works, just that idea alone is, is so funny to me. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of this book and that was a fun, fun way to look at that as well. And overall, I'd say that the book was enjoyable, I think the story was not bad, it was a decent story. Uh, it was fun, it was entertaining to read, I think in terms of the plot execution it was done overall pretty good. The only drawbacks that I found here was the magic system just had more in it than it needed to uh, and, and that's the gist of it uh, but uh, overall I did enjoy it and I think it was a good read uh, it's hard to find a Sanderson book that I don't enjoy and uh, you know maybe that's I just love Sanderson so much I expect to love it <laughs> and so I do uh, but of all the Sanderson books that I've read this would probably be ranked lowest as far as li most like to like so I kind of put that as a three star because of some of the drawbacks with the magic system not being fully fleshed out or maybe having stuff that didn't need to be there kind of thing. One of the one of the characters, I guess you could say, that's in this book. Now, if you've read other Sanderson books but haven't read Warbreaker yet, you will recognize the character or the sword Nightblood, which makes an appearance in other Sanderson works as well. That's this is the or origins of the sword Nightblood, and the Awakening is part of that. Awakening is when you breathe life into something that was alive or something that was never alive in the first place. That is the process or magic of awakening is what that that does and how that brings that into sentience essentially or non-sentience. Not all awakened objects are sentient of course, 
But this is where the sword Nightblood comes from. It comes from Halandrin. It comes from this world uh, that Sanderson has created here in the Kingdom of Halandrin. And Nightblood is an interesting sword because he was created to destroy evil. That's all this sword thinks about. And it is a sentient sword. So it's always talking about, I need to destroy evil. That was the command that was given to it. But the Nightblood has no understanding of what evil is. It... It just knows that it's supposed to destroy it. So it's always asking, is this evil? Is that evil? Can we destroy that? I think they might be evil. Can we go destroy that? <laughs> Which is just hilarious listening to this sword talk who's just determined to destroy evil without actually understanding or knowing what evil is. That to me just makes it funny. So there you have it. There are my thoughts on Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson from the Cosmere world. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below, what did you like about this book or didn't like? Have you read this book? What do you think of that? Uh, are you interested in reading it after hearing my thoughts on it? Let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. You can join me down over on the Discord as well. I'll have that link below as well as my bookstagram or just leave a comment and like, comment, subscribe if you like this kind of content. And thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And as always, until next time, keep on reading. Bye.